the word evil next to Nazis. I think we need to look at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just because you don't like one group doesn't mean the other. But look, it's I fine. love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I have to disagree with that. All right. Mr. Jones, thank you for being with us, sir. I felt we needed to include that context. Uh, boy, seemed like you were holding on for a bumpy ride with that interview. Do I, do I have that about right? Did you expect that in your wildest dreams? Uh, no, I didn't. And, and I didn't say what he could talk about, but I said, can we just try to bring people together and, and you know, talk about real issues like human trafficking and fentanyl and how you want to bring jobs back to America and really see the deeper side of you and not just sound bites. And they were like, yeah, uh, in fact, he doesn't want to even get into that stuff. But then right away, sitting in the same studio I'm in right now, Thursday, bam. And I thought he was joking at first. And here's the deal. He pulled up in front of the office and got out of the vehicle in the GIMP mask. And so <laughs> I, I didn't know what to say. And I said, pull your mask off. Let me see. It's really you. And it was him. He puts the mask. He unzips the mask. And then it's it really creepy in person with the mask. Yeah. And then, I mean, really, I would see this as, as, as almost like a giant trolling operation, really. He was as, uh, super high on adrenaline when he did it. He, f he feels really good about it. Uh, and he, I don't think, has a very good historical knowledge uh, about World War II either. Uh, so, I mean, he, he really is in, in love with uh, all of that uh, design, which so much of what the Nazis designed ended up being brought over here with Operation Paperclip. Right. So so if it's bad that Ye says he loves Hitler, uh, then it, it's even worse that our own government brought tens of thousands of Nazis in at the end of World War II to run most of the major agencies. So sure. uh, I, Bo on, both on a Richter are, scale, both I guess, are bad. Both are bad, but let me add, bad. but I did notice that you tried to bring in the concept of uh, I'm trying to remember the the, the term Hitler uh, the man was it the man yet to come what was the what was the uh, the man to come the out. coming man the coming man and I remember yes exactly the coming man sorry forgive me but um, it's something I'm, with which I'm familiar and I remember you asked him a very pointed question you said you, you don't want to be that coming man and it was very clear to me that regardless of where people line up here on any of this and of course I'm anti Hitler and I know that you are and I'm, I'm really glad the Allies beat the Nazis he was not familiar with that and so. It does concern me that if he's going to go out and make these statements, were you concerned sort of understanding or, or being around his, his, his close inner social circle that they really aren't doing a good job in ensuring that he's informed when he goes out and discusses these issues? He is very forceful and has a big personality, and it's really hard to get a word in edgewise, kind of like Trump. And you know, people think I have a big personality, but I'll, I'll actually be quiet sometimes. And I'm not you know, putting him down for that. He was like a whirlwind. You couldn't shut him up. He was going to say what he was going to say. And I was bringing up historic, real things about the Nazis that my family, you know, who were in World War II, told me about, oh, that's true. We saw that in Germany or we saw that uh, in Italy. Again, both my grandfathers almost died, both of them, World War II. I almost don't exist because of it. Uh, and they, you know, they talked about what the Nazis were like. And uh, uh, my mom's uh, dad also worked on some black budget weapons programs in the 50s and 60s. And just said that he'd been in some military bases uh, that had Nazis on them, and they were very, very arrogant. And he, he didn't like having to work with them in these, in these, some of these programs. So I'm like eight years old, hearing my grandfather in Austin, Texas, sitting around the kitchen table bitching about, you know, Nazis and uh, working on secret uh, weapons programs and how arrogant they were and how much he hated the government bringing them in here. So that's a real thing that's going on. So my dislike of Nazis really comes from my grandfathers, who both didn't uh, like them very much. Right. Well, let me ask you this. Um, what was it when you had, obviously there's the numbers aspect because he's, he's a huge name right now in the media. What was it that you were um, looking to uh, achieve or what, what were you hoping would be the end goal? What would be the ideal scenario with this interview with, with Ye? Because obviously it went viral across the media, but bringing him in, what were you hoping was, was going to come of it? Well, I was, while I was listening to you do a great job of breaking down that this whole Hunter laptop thing and the Twitter files are a lot bigger than just Hunter Biden. It's it's everything they've been censoring. I was thinking, what do I want to say about Ye first? And it's just this. I really thought I could come in here and shut up at first and let him get it out of his system, even if he did it. Right. I was saying, hey, let's do something different. Let's you know, let's show him your intellectual side. Let's let you know, let's get into a bunch of issues. And I had all these issues in front of me. He goes, Why don't you just set those aside? We're not getting into that. I was like, okay, he's letting me know he's in control. 
And so I figured after an hour at least he would let me kind of then bring up some topics I wanted. Uh, but you kind of had the salacious crumb, uh, the baby Hitler uh, of Nick Fuentes over there. Uh, you know, that, that was a joke Jimmy Kimmel made. Like, where have I seen this before? And it's, it's I'm Jabba the Hutt, and there's there's a salacious crumb sitting there. But seriously, I didn't know that Nick Fuentes was really a Nazi lover. Yeah, I, I'd had him on over the years three or four times whenever he was being debanked or censored, and he would be like, no, I'm not a Nazi. I just care about white people's rights. So I think this, this whole thing was a real coming out. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, uh, especially with the Fuentes thing, and I'll still have Fuentes on, I believe in the First Amendment, uh, but there's a real creepy factor with this Hitler stuff. And then I also noticed that Richard Spencer came out and said, yay, blew Jones away, because Jones is really controlled by the liberal narrative oh, that boy. Hitler's bad. But, but those of us that know the dark, powerful beauty of Hitler and, and of the darkness and of the strength, and it's like some homoerotic you know, thing over Hitler, it, it, that is kind of what's going on. There's this Hitler fetish, and no, I'm not into dudes in fancy you know, peacock military uniforms <laughs> that... that that, by the way, got 22 million Germans killed. So the biggest killer of Germans in history, if you like Germanic people, and I'm, you know, I'm basically half German, have a, a lot of German roots, is Hitler. Hitler was a disaster. Hitler was an occultist. Hitler was a pedophile. Hitler was horrible. Screw Hitler. I, Burn in hell Hitler. I, and, and the left uses Hitler to push their communist agenda that is basically just as bad and authoritarian to call all of us Hitler. And so people are so sick of being called Hitler, they go, hey, if Hitler's so powerful, Powerful. Let's just say we're with Hitler. And that's what these people are doing. And I felt like I was sucked in to a giant publicity stunt. Now, now I, I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at either person. I understand that they probably even believe what they're doing. But no, I saw a whole bunch of programs like the Young Turds and all of them say, Jones is just mad they let the secret out. Jones likes Hitler. No, I hate authoritarians. I hate communists. I hate Xi Jinping. I hate Hitler. I hate Mao Zedong. I hate Joseph... Uh, you know, Stalin. I hate Fidel Castro. I hate Hugo Chavez. Yeah. I love George Washington. I love Thomas Jefferson. I love American strength and freedom and power and Christianity and open societies and capitalism and free speech. And I want it back now. So burn in hell, Hitler and Stalin and Mao. Burn in hell. This is what I told Piers Morgan. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took hey, the guns. Hey. Mao took the guns. And if you try to take our guns, 1776 will commence again. You are my yay right now. See, I'm I'm you and you're yay. See, this you, I think you have some I think you have some empathy for what I have to do sometimes when you're on. By the way, Alex, don't do that thing where you Monday morning quarterback and take credit for it. Hitler was already in hell burning before you said that. That's right. Okay, that's not because you called for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, no. Look. Um, I understand exactly. Where, at first, I thought you were going to say the biggest killer of Nazis were the uniforms, because that's how we went in. I thought you were going to say, like, the Hugo Boss uniforms yeah. were made of asbestos. But no, I, I, I agree with you. And here's the thing. <laughs> you, have people, you have people trying to defend it saying, well, and, and, and there's validity to this. Kanye West said, I love everybody. He didn't say he hated anybody. He said, I love Jews. I love Hitler. But he did go out of his way to praise actions of Hitler while condemning actions of Jews in this sort of general monolith. And he did actively deny the Holocaust. So to act as though it was an equivalency of I love everybody, that's not what happened with that interview. Now, if people out there want to say, hey, he has every right to love Hitler, of course. And if you say, I agree with him when he says he loves Hitler and that the Holocaust didn't happen, fine. But to act as though there was this equivalency, you know, on, on your show in its, in its totality. Sure, he said he loved everyone, but he did have specific praise for some totalitarian dictators. Well, and he I said, he he said I love Hitler. I think he had an <laughs> orgasm over there. <laughs> well, that's just how he sounds when he raps. He's, I love Hitler. Ha! Huh? But he, um, <laughs> I did, it was one of those things where, let me ask you this. Do you think that ultimately it kind of ends up hurting? It kind of ends up hurting people who are out there advocating for free speech when we're saying we are not Nazis and the guy goes out and just puts on a mask and says, actually, I do love Nazis and actually the Holocaust doesn't happen. It does make it hard for people out yeah. there because, look, you're a lot of things, Alex. An anti-Semite is not one of them if people have looked at you historically. I don't even think many people have leveled that accusation against you. If anything, you've seen anti-Semites, people who legitimately hate Jews. And I don't mean people who don't believe that we should be sending a bunch of money to Israel. I mean people who legitimately hate Jews have accused you of being controlled Jewish opposition for a very long amount of time. So, Well, that's the thing, yeah. and, and here's the deal. I don't like MS-13, but I'm not against Central Americans. Uh, I don't like the, the new Black Panther Party that's like a black KKK 
but, but, but I don't blame black people. So Jews are a very diverse group for anybody that actually studies politics and geopolitical systems. There's a whole bunch of factions in Israel constantly fighting with each other and assassinating each other. Uh, the Jews over there have some of the most draconian you know, vaccine rules in the world. If they're so special, why do they have all that? So it, it's really not true. Are there powerful mafias? Are there powerful groups in Hollywood that have me from a certain group? Absolutely. And do, do, do we see those groups supporting leftist garbage in the media? Am I irritated by those groups? Do I like the ADL trying to take our free speech? No, I'm a big critic of the ADL. And, and they single me out at, at their big events just two weeks ago with the head of Pfizer and, and two years ago with uh Sasha Barrett Cohen saying, I'm evil, I'm dangerous, I need to be silenced. But there's all sorts of groups trying to silence my speech, not just the ADL. So it, it's it's really what it is with these groups is. And by the way, to be the clear, just says, so you don't say, when we say these groups, we mean anti-freedom groups, and we don't just mean, we do not mean absolutely. Jewish people. Just to be clear, George Soros is a second-generation atheist. Okay, let's be clear about that. Yeah. So to well, that's what I though, just said. I, yes. I, I'm being I'm, I'm being 100 clear, but but at the same time, I don't. I'm not saying you're doing this. I get you have to because they'll lie. I'm not tiptoeing around this. I, what I'm saying is, I am critical of all of the anti-free speech. Yes. Pro tyranny groups. You know, last time I checked, Tim Cook's not Jewish. He's working with communist China to suppress the, their people. Last time I checked, Xi Jinping's the biggest dictator in history. His re, his communist regime, going back to Mao, has killed more people than Hitler ever thought about. They they, they estimate a hundred million. So, but again, I don't dislike Asian people. My sister is Korean adopted, and I love her. We you know. Uh, when I was 14 years old, we adopted from Korea when she was six months old. I love my sister. I love Asian people, but I am scared as hell of Xi Jinping and his 50 million man army. Uh, and I'm d d definitely upset about it. Yeah. And so again, if there were, if there was some country with a billion and a half Jews in it and, uh, they were promoting freedom and, and, and like America used to be, I'd try to go move there. But if there was a country of a billion and a half Jews promoting world government and death camps and, and, and forced injections, I would say I'm against that regime, not because they're Jewish, but because it's authoritarian. Same thing with Xi Jinping. I mean, it is the most evil regime in history. It is our main foe. We are in grave danger. Yeah. And again, nobody says, oh, you don't like Xi Jinping because you don't like Asians. It's it, it's it's all a fraud. Yeah, I hate the Communist Chinese Party because I uh, my heart goes out to the Chinese people. I think Gerald, yeah. you, Gerald has a question for yeah, you, and so I appreciate you taking the time because yeah. I know, I know that was a tough seat to be in, Alex. We could <laughs> there was there was a moment on your face where you looked like the uh, boom goes the dynamite kid, where you were like, oh. <laughs> I could tell that you wanted a break. I've been there. All right, Gerald, do you have a question? Yeah, so I just wanted to dive into the Christian thing just a little bit because people are conflating this Christianity thing with people on the far right that espouse these anti-Semitic views, and even uh, Ye said, you know, I, I love everybody. Well, that's and, and you said it too. You said not that you love everybody, that you're a Christian, right? Just declaring like I am a Christian. I don't like these things. Christ said he loved the sinner but hated the sin, right? He always called people out for for their sins. Just to be clear, did Kanye call Hitler out for any of his sins on your show? Well, let's be clear, and that's what Kanye didn't get, which is why I'm not trying to put him down, but I don't no. think he has a fifth-grade ed education about the Nazis. And, and I'm going to try to meet with him again and actually show him some real history from I Hitler's so. own writings. Because Hitler was anti-Christian. Hitler was an occultist. He wanted to yeah. eradicate Christianity. Some of the top Nazis uh, in the party did. Now, later, when he took the country over, did some Nazis wear crosses on their shirts? Absolutely. People mixed it together. It's like, right. you know, you might have a Texas thing and then an American flag thing or an army thing. Right, they co-opted it. A, a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they co-opted it. And and sure, the Catholic Church was taken over by the Nazis. I mean, they they, they ran Italy, they ran yep. Germany. So they went along with it. I'm not defending the Catholic Church. Right. But the idea that Hitler was a Christian or that Hitler was born a Christian and all this stuff, Adolf Hitler was a deep occultist in his own writings, in his own words. That's why they used runes in their uniforms. It's everything he did was about once they had a worldwide Aryan master race in control of all the slave races, uh, the Uber mention over the little slaves, the supermen over the slaves, yeah. they were going to eradicate Christianity. They want an earth worship. Uh, blood and soil. If you want to see what they did, there's footage now on uh, Twitter of Ukrainian Azog battalions cutting themselves, getting in a tomb, a six-foot grave, 
bleeding into the blood, getting out, hailing you know who, but they hail Odin, and then they go over and put their hands on Odin, and they've all got swastikas on their arms. That's a real blood and soil Nazi ritual yeah. that Hitler invented that the SS did. So when you see the Azog Battalion, they're doing SS rituals. They're not Christian. They're co-opted Norse, Germanic, uh, Viking religion, mixed with the Nazis. Yeah, one of the other reasons that I know these groups are not Christian, Alex, is because the entire Bible from the very beginning to the very end is God's redemption plan for us, but specifically the Jewish people, and God is not done with him. He promises them an opportunity to come back and have a final chance. That's the entire book of Revelation. Most of the Bible is about the redemption of the Jews. And so for anybody out there to espouse Christianity and say, I'm anti-Semitic and that this stuff wasn't bad, they haven't read the book. They are not amongst us. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. And by the way, my final point on this was, you've talked about the history in World War II, and he's like, well, Hitler invented the microphone, and he did this, and he did this, and he did this. And he, he said highways. And the microphone like, that I'm like, yes, using, yes, I think he, he maybe means the Autobahn. Like roads were yeah, around before they Hitler. They were, but I mean his highway system, the you know the Hugo Boss stuff, the rockets. I get all that. He doesn't mention the fact that he did things that would make the Egyptians blush with the people that they killed to build the pyramids. I get it. Maybe aliens did it as well. But I don't think he understands how many people's lives were. That's destroyed. why they have to deny it. That's yeah. why there has to be a Holocaust denial component. And 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 this is first off before I move on to this because there's so much to unpack here, Alex. How do you think the press has has covered it? And I don't mean you. I think that you know, I don't mean. Of course, they'll, they'll try and tar and feather you. But I'm saying, do you think that this, the way the press has said that, hey, Kanye West, yay on Alex Jones, went off and was very obviously incredibly anti-Semitic. Do we think that in this case was the press partially right? In other words, are they completely misrepresenting it? Or when you were sitting there, did did you feel as though um, this, this is probably not uh, productive for him? Look. I like Kanye West. I like Ye. I, I think he really means well. Um, you know, I don't know if Nick Fuentes believes what he's saying and doing. Nick says a lot of really good stuff I agree with. Uh, once I heard him endorse that he thinks Hitler's great, I, I lost a lot of respect for him because I know Nick's really smart. Uh, and I'm not saying Ye isn't smart, but, you know, he's, he's kind of a, a savant uh, and, you know, has a lot of talent and stuff. And so, yeah, I, I think in the long run, uh, Ye wants to be a big revolutionary and wants to hit the barbed wire, as he said. He said, you're Terminator 1, we're Terminator 10. And I just really think at the end of the day that that's not the case. The left have adopted so many of the actual Nazi tactics of control and their whole system of, of lockdowns. What you see in China, big groups of people, about the tens of thousands being marched together, being, being led by one Pied Piper in the whole white, white medical uniform, that's that you know that's the real type of ideology that the Nazis were striving for, and we know that Hitler and of course Joseph Goebbels wrote about how this this is public. They wanted to uh, take over England and kill H. G. Wells and kill Bertrand Russell and others because the H. G. Wells and Bertrand Russell had a competing authoritarian world government leftist model that the Nazis were competing with, and they saw themselves, as you said, as socialists, but. A different brand of it and so i happen to know for a fact that the left and the tactic that's what george arwell wrote in 1984 about george arwell was number two in the propaganda arm of british intelligence in world war ii he'd been a communist before that in the spanish civil war and been a hero and heavily wounded but then when he actually got at the top of the british uh socialist uh, society uh and recognized that that actually Stalin was being funded by the West, that it was actually a war against the individual in the future, and that Hitler had been wound up by British intelligence, not, not run by them, but actually you know, built up and given power and funding early by the big banks, he realized that there was a global authoritarian system that operated under different names, but basically had the same goal, total power and control. And the reason I know that is not just reading 1984, probably eight, nine times, but uh, I've read the writings, the essays uh, in several big compendiums of George Orwell right before he died in 1949. Uh, yeah. He finished uh, 1984 in like 1947. Uh, but he, he died about a year and a half later. And, and so George Arwell had this view of it as well. He thought the Nazis were the ultimate evil. He fought them before World War II in Spain uh, and, and against Franco. And then he later learned there was a more evil group of Fabian socialist, uh, British intelligence, basically Spectre, uh, what you see in the James Bond movies. Uh, James Bond is Spectre. 
And I'm not saying all of British intelligence, but that British empire model that merged with America at Bretton Woods, and, and then America became the world empire at that point, that system is full spectrum dominance where they want to control all the major groups and then play them off against each other in a Hegelian dialectic. Can, can I jump in here with three things? First off, I do encourage Sorry. people. No, no, no. I do encourage people to um, uh, go and research you know, Orwell and also, by the way, the Catalonians, because this is something where people will try and use it as an example of successful socialism right in the 1930s. Say, oh, anarcho syndicate socialism. Go read what happened with Orwell and read how that collapsed and the kinds of pressures. And basically there were still factions of warring socialists because I was taught that in university. I was taught that in college that that was a good example of socialism, which lasted all but under half a decade. The other thing is Kanye West said, if you're Terminator 1, he's Terminator 10. I don't think he understands how progressively shittier the Terminator sequels have gotten after Terminator 2. So that's actually a compliment to you. But here's something else. Look, you and I, you know that I disagree with you on some things, and I agree with you on, on a lot, disagree with you on some. But I do think you're very consistent in uh, your approach to what you believe morally to be correct and incorrect. Here's my issue with some of the stuff that's going on with, with Ye. And I, and, I, and I don't really, I don't believe there's hate in his heart. Like you said, I think that there's probably some ignorance because, and the reason I hold out hope is I see him He's very pro-life, and he talks about eugenics, and he talks about Sanger and Planned Parenthood and the genocide that's taking place against black babies. But then he doesn't seem to draw the connection that that is something, of course, that Hitler was incredibly enthusiastic about and permeated well, let's go our further. abortion let's go policies further. today. Hitler said, Hitler said Margaret Sanger's book was his Bible. Look this up. And they used the Margaret Sanger and the, and the Cold Springs Harbor, New York, Rockefeller-run eugenics laboratory as their defense at Nuremberg, because it had been the Rockefellers and Margaret Sanger that helped set up the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in the late 1920s that then funded Hitler and was the brain trust of the Nazi race sciences. So what you said is 110% true. And that's what I would try to tell him also once we got off air. So I'm going to try to meet with him sometime when he's not as manic. And I'm going to try to explain to him. Do you think that, he's manic? Again Can I ask you that? I know you're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Did, did you did you sense? I have, I've had bipolar people in my family. Did, and he has said that he was diagnosed with that. D did you see maybe perhaps some some signs of, of, of mania? And this isn't concern trolling because I really hope he has people around him who are, who are helping him and care about him. No, I mean, I don't think he's mentally ill. I think he's enjoying himself. You know, they have all these diagnosis terms. I mean, I'm pretty manic. I have a lot of energy. Uh, you know, so does anybody that's successful. I don't know, but but he he he, he did seem to be very very. People can go to infowars.com because remember, yes. I'm more censored than anybody else out there. They can go to infowars.com, and they can also go to Band Video, and find the full interview, and actually see it for themselves in in context. I I, I can't bring myself to go watch it again because I can't stand watching myself. But I, I've watched a lot of excerpts, and I just think what happened was. He decided to go all the way. He decided, he decided to try to be as shocking as possible and say, screw the world. And he and then once he started pressing on the dopamine button of saying the things he said, he just couldn't stop. And so it became, uh, you know, just a situation of, of redlining the engine the entire time he was on. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like that. uh that might be the case. Um, all right. Well, look, I actually do want to ask you about some things that we probably have to discuss uh, on Mug Club only. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I will, let me just leave this one thing, because I do think this is important. Because, look, we do know that there are, you have many Jewish fans. I have many Jewish fans. And, I, and by the way, I don't just mean Zionists. I mean, there are Jewish libertarian fans who believe, who support Israel, certainly in contrast to Hamas and Iran, and people who want to wipe them off the face of the map, but think that we shouldn't be providing as much foreign aid. I don't believe that that's anti-Semitic. Um, I do think it's important, and I think what happens is people are imprecise when they say Jews. It's very different from, for example, black Americans, or uh, if you, for example, like you, you mentioned sort of people from Mex Mexican Americans. Jew can mean, a Jewish person can be Jewish by faith, meaning they practice a faith. They can be Jewish by ethnicity, and they can be Jewish by culture. And to lump them all in, there is a very big difference between, yes, I do think there's a conversation to be had about the secularists in the entertainment industry. And if someone wants to conflate that with anti-Semitism, what they're doing is saying, oh, is it because you're saying because they're Jewish? No, no. I'm saying for the same reason that there are plenty of non-Jewish people in the entertainment industry who are involved with grooming, who are involved with, by the way, uh, the degeneracy of society. The only reason that there tend to be people who are 
largely atheist Jews in the entertainment industry, or for example, in banks, which compared to their, them as a percentage of the population is true, is for the same reason that there are plenty of Jewish doctors and scientists and Asian doctors and scientists, because they're very hardworking, industrious people who value studying, who value higher education, and who value those fields of work. We need to be clear when people are discussing these things that there's a huge exactly. difference. So let me elaborate yes. on that before you switch to Mug Club, because I think this is very important. The left has wrapped itself in, we're Captain America, we're fighting the Nazis, and everybody else are Nazis on the side. That's made a lot of people get mad and say, okay, screw you, I'm a Nazi. I think that's what's happening with Nick Fuentes and people like Kanye West, yay, yay West. But I'll tell you, I've been attacked massively by the ADL, all these other groups, and they wrap themselves in, we're Jews, and then they attack me in the name of Jews, which is then making a lot of people think, well, Alex Jones is good, you must be bad. So I, I know there are a lot of Jews out there, conservative Jews and others, that have sent letters to the ADL saying, leave Tucker Carlson alone, stop calling him an anti-Semite, it's not true, or stop calling Donald Trump as anti-Semite, it's preposterous, he's a great friend of Israel. And so it's the weaponization of the left that is actually giving support to real Nazis by watering the whole thing down. It's very, 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 very serious. And the ADL knows exactly what they're doing. So I think people have a right to say whatever they want as long as they don't call for violence. Mm -hmm. I think if the Azog Battalion's on there doing literal hit roll rituals on Twitter, you know, uh, yay should still be on there. So, so I, I'm not defending any of the censorship, any of that. Uh, I'm just simply saying the left weaponizing World War II that ended 76 years years ago, 77, however many years ago, is very, very dangerous. And the left saying at universities, the national news, you cover it more than anybody, that being white's inherently bad and teaching courses on that is going to then make Nazis sound legitimate because here's a bunch of leftist academics and Hollywood people, a lot of Jews, literally trying to teach the majority minorities who are now the majority that, oh, white people who aren't a certain you know a religious group you know white people except jews are all bad people this is this is hitlerian this is racist this is race-based politics by the other side and i know almost all americans no matter what color they are disagree with it almost all jews disagree with it but when we look at the media and just turn it the other way it sounds like hitler when they're on msnbc saying white people are inherently bad right. and it's going to be great when there's no more white people that needs to stop that is hitlerian in the name of fighting hitler do you see the psyop yeah no i think you're right and also you know where i've never heard that kind of rhetoric i've been to many a synagogue just to be clear many Never heard that kind of hatred coming from observant Jews and Orthodox Jews, and I think it's important to delineate. It is Infowars.com. We're going to go to Mug Club. Oh, i, I got to tell you right again. L folks, ultra-Orthodox <laughs> Jews, as they call them, are, are super right-wing pro-America. Uh, I mean, I see their views. I'm like 98%. Exactly. And in Israel, the leftist Jews, when they're in power, persecute the right-wing Jews. Right. No, exactly. It's not a monolith, and people need to be clear about that. And I think that we need to be able to have honest conversations about all of these issues, and I just sometimes I think that it's overshadowed when someone is, like you said, if you were, I don't think you were roped in uh, to any kind of publicity stunt, as you said. I don't think you were used. I think you're you're, you're clever enough to not allow that to happen. Well, but I, I do knew think it was a danger. I knew it was a danger, but I believed it wasn't going to happen. I would have much rather had it been a big story and it, it had been a coming together and an awakening, and then have a relationship with Ye instead of him blowing up like a like a sun going supernova and 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 burning himself up. I yeah. mean, it didn't really hurt Infowars because I people know I'm not a Nazi. I'm like, dude, that's not good. But at the same time, Fuentes, and I'm going to get him back on there and challenge him. He's just giggling too much like it's fun watching this over here. He's not stupid. And, yeah. and you know, he, he he knows the history here. And, and so I'm going to have a debate with Fuentes. Not a mean debate, uh, but I'm going to get my history. He can get his history. And we're going to have a debate about this because, you know, to admit the truth about World War II. Look, I mean, I told the story when they were here. My grandfather had... You know, his dad was German. Most of the rest of the family had been in Texas forever, but his dad still spoke some German and was only like second generation in, in Dallas. And they were rich Germans up there. And he owned the big Chevy dealership, all the rest of it. And they lived next to a super rich German who was first generation, who'd moved here as a kid, who was the inventor, one of the main inventors of refrigeration. He had big patents on air conditioning. He was super rich, the equivalent of a billionaire today. And, and, and in the fanciest part of Dallas, he owned like a hundred acre complex. And my grandfather would go over there and, and he would tinker and work with in, in this guy's invention shop. The reason my grandfather after World War II got into inventing and stuff and was involved in some different projects. And he watched this guy who had blonde hair, by the way, and blue eyes, totally German, you know, a quote Aryan. He watched that guy from the early 30s up until my grandfather went off uh, you know, to the Army Air Corps. And he watched that guy get totally depressed, you know, just shut up, 
uh, become reclusive, and I think he told me, he only told me the story twice, commit suicide later, was because he later learned the Nazis over the decade that they were in power, from 33 or, you know, up, were, were threatening to kill his German relatives in Germany if he didn't secretly give him all their money. So that's what the Nazis did, is they were the most cutthroat. At the end of the war, they probably would have won if they didn't spend half their time running around stealing all the art, including the drapes. They had whole giant cave systems that they had people build just to put the hordes of loot in. Yeah, I mean, they, they were no, just, they were, they were they absolutely were, evil. They were, and by the way, if the people back then, this is the thing, it's one of those things where people today, Monday morning quarterback, and say, I think they did a lot of good things. Well, guess what? The people who were held out as ambassadors back then for Nazis, well, they were, they were, it was done by force. For example, Max Schmeling and Joe Lewis. Max Schmeling, a lot of people know the Joe, Jesse Owens story. Max Schmeling and Joe Lewis, right? Schmeling was the Aryan representative, Joe Lewis for the United States. They were good friends for the rest of their lives because Max Schmeling was not a Nazi, did not support what they were on board with. Now, I, before we go to Mug Club, it's Infowars.com, and I'm hearing you, I don't want people to misrepresent what you're saying you just said you're not trying to platform because you agree with him you want to have nick fuentes on so you can debate him and uh show where he is wrong and i think that that is something that is healthy otherwise people exist in echo chambers infowars.com we're gonna go to mug club because youtube there's no way we could do this here alex stay with us youtube piss off thank you rumble